Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to solve May, June 2012, 1-2 one, paper. The course we are studying is Physics 5054. My name is Farhan Mazar. Let's start today's paper. On your screen, the first question we have, a reel of copper wire is labeled length 30 meter and diameter two millimeter. A student calculates the volume of the copper wire. Which instruments does he use to measure accurately the length and the diameter of the wire? The length is 30 meter, so it's more than one meter, so we will use the tape. The diameter of wire is always measured with the micrometer. So for question number one, the choice is D. For question number one, the choice, the best choice will be D choice. Okay, so then we move to question number two. Which row correctly shows examples of a vector quantity and a scalar quantity? Area is a scalar, so A cannot be the choice. Mass is a scalar, so it cannot be the choice. Velocity is a vector. Acceleration is also a vector. So C cannot be the choice. Weight is a vector. Volume is a scalar. So D is the right choice. A cyclist travels along a hilly road without using the paddles or brakes. Air resistance and friction are negligible. The speed time graph of the cyclist is shown. At which point did he reach the bottom of the first hill? You see, you, you should understand that this is a speed time graph. It's telling you the speed of the cyclist and the time. Okay, so when you will be coming down a, a, a hill and when you will be coming down, your speed will be increasing, increasing, increasing. And when you will reach the bottom of the hill, we hope that your speed will be maximum. So when you are coming down from a hill, so your speed will be maximum when you will reach the bottom of the hill. At that moment, your speed will be maximum. So where is the speed maximum? At the point B. So at the point B, he was at the bottom of the hill when he was coming down. So B is the right choice. So carefully read this story and imagine it how this works. It's not, uh, it's just a speed time graph, okay? Don't think these ups and downs as a hill. It's a speed time graph. And when the boy is at the bottom of the hill, his speed will be maximum. So on this speed time, when the speed is maximum at point B, so probably at point B, he's at the bottom of the hill. So B is the choice. A student drops a table tennis ball in air. What happens to the velocity and to the acceleration of the ball during the first few seconds after the release? You know, when you throw something downward, it's falling. It's uh, at the start, the velocity is zero. And it's what velocity starts increasing, 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 increasing. And, but at the start, his acceleration is maximum. It might be 10 meter per second square. And gradually the acceleration starts decreasing. The reason, reason is the air resistance. Because as the body gets speed, the air resistance increases, which opposes the downward motion. So what happens that the resultant force decreases and the acceleration decreases. So at the start, the acceleration is maximum, maybe 10 meter per second square. And then it gradually decreases. So velocity is increasing, but the acceleration is decreasing when you are falling down. So the best choice for question number four will be C, velocity increases, acceleration decreases. So C is the choice. Question number five, a coin falls through the air from rest and eventually reaches a constant speed. Two forces P and Q act on the coin. What happens to the force P and to the resultant force acting on the coin before it reaches constant speed. You know here, this Q represents weight and during the fall, the weight do not change. 
this force P that represents the air resistance. And at the start, the air resistance is zero, and the gradually the air resistance starts increasing. And uh, so the P value will be increasing. The resultant force is different between these two forces. So the resultant force at the start, initially the resultant force is maximum. And as the P value also starts increasing, the resultant force starts decreasing. So the P is increasing and the resultant force is decreasing. It's the same question like the one we did before. But that was about velocity and acceleration. This is about the air resistance and the resultant force. So the resistance force keep on increasing, but the resultant force initially is maximum and then it gradually decreases. So force P will increase and the resultant force will decrease. So C is the choice. Question number five, C is the right choice, sir. The diagram shows a motorcyclist leaning over in order to move around the corner. Which force causes him to move around the corner? You know, when you move in a circular path, you need a centripetal force. And the centripetal force is always directed towards the center of that circle in which you are moving. So this boy is trying to take a turn in this way. So the force here only, the only force which is shown towards the center of that circle is A. So A is the choice. Question number six, A is the right choice, sir. The diagram shows a uniform beam balance pivoted about its center. What is the value of the force P? So you'll see here we have a pivot. And this force trying to produce a clockwise moment, four Newton force. Uh, its moment arm is two centimeter. This force is trying to produce anti-clockwise moment about the pivot, three Newton. Its moment arm is six centimeter. This force P, its moment arm is two centimeter. And this force P is trying to produce a clockwise moment. The sum of the clockwise moment is equal to the sum of anti-clockwise moment. So the moment produced by this is clockwise. The moment produced by this is clockwise. So their moments we will add up and that will be equal to the moment produced by this because it's anti-clockwise. I've done this on a paper. Let me show you my work. I hope that it's on your screen. Question number seven, clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. So P multiplied two plus four multiplied two equals to three multiplied six. And you do the mathematics and the value of the P will be five. The value of the P will be five Newton. So five Newton is the answer. So A is the choice. The diagram shows four shapes cut from the same piece of card. Which shape has its center of mass nearest to the baseline? So this force, this shape C, its center of mass will be here. Its center mass and center mass will be a little higher. Its center mass is obviously higher. Its center mass will be here somewhere. So C will be the answer. It's a little tricky. C is the answer. Question number nine is on your screen. A metal wire of initial length 1000 millimeter extends by four millimeter when a load of two Newton is added to it. What is the length of the wire when a further three Newton is added? Assuming that the wire does not extend beyond the limit of proportionality. You see, we have unstretched length L0 as 1,000 millimeter. When the load is 2 Newton, the extension is 4 millimeter. And when the load is 2 plus 3, 5 Newton, he says, what will be the length? So first of all, I need to find out what will be the extension on 5 Newton. And then I will be able to tell what will be the length. Length will be L0 plus the extension. I've done this on a paper. Let's see that work. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> L naught is 1000 millimeter. 
and the extension the load they are directly proportional to each other if the load is 2 newton the extension is 4 millimeter if the load is 5 newton what will be the extension so 4 by x equals 2 by 5 and the value of the x will be 10 millimeter now what will be the length on 5 newton l is equals to l naught plus extension so 1000 plus 10 and that will be 1010 millimeter I hope that you have understood it. 1010 millimeter, let's see what is the option. So C is the option. Question number five, C is the right option. Okay. Question number 10 is on your screen. And they say, the mass of a paper clip is 0 0.50 gram and the density of its material is 8 grams per centimeter cube. The total volume of the number of clips is 20 centimeter cube. How many paper, paper clips are there? So the density is given, the volume of the paper clips is given. So I will first of all find the mass of the paper clips. Then I will divide that mass with the mass of one paper clip and I will get the number of paper clips. I have done this on a paper. There we go. You know the density is equals to mass divided by volume. So mass is equals to density multiply volume. Density is 8 grams per centimeter cube. And the volume of the paper clips is 20 centimeter cube. So 8 multiplied 20. The answer will be 160 gram. Number of paper clips will be the mass of the paper clips divided by the mass of one paper clip. So 160 divided by 0 0.50 and the answer is 320 paper clips. So there are 320 paper clips. I hope you have understood. So 320 paper clips, D is the right choice. D is the choice. Okay. So on your screen, question 11. The pressure of a gas in a cylinder is found using a water manometer. So here we have a water manometer, the water inside here. And here we have the cylinder. And here it is open to the atmosphere. The difference of the levels of the water in both the limbs is 20 centimeter. It means that the pressure of this gas is 20 centimeter of water more than the atmospheric pressure. The question is the density of the water is 100 kg per meter cube. The gravitational field strength G is 10 Newton per kg. What is the pressure above atmospheric pressure of the gas in the cylinder? So we have to convert this difference of pressure between the atmosphere and the gas cylinder into Pascals. So the formula is very easy. Uh, rho GH. The formula is rho GH. Rho is the density. G is the gravitational field strength. And H is the height. But remember, the density is kg per meter cube. But this height is only 20 centimeters. So I will convert this into meters also. That's the one trick. Uh, one googly net, okay? So I've done this on a paper. Let me show you. So question number 11 is on your screen. Pressure is rho gh. And 1,000, density is 1,000 kg per meter cube, multiply 10, multiply 20. So to convert the 20 centimeter into meters, I will divide it with 100. So the answer will be 2,000 Pascal. So 2,000 Pascal is the answer. 2,000 Pascal, 2,000 Pascal. So it looks that the question number 11, B is the choice. So B is the right choice, sir. Question number 12. Two cylinders are connected by a thin pipe. One cylinder have a volume of 20 centimeter cube and contains air at pressure P. The other cylinder has a volume of 100 centimeter cube and contains a vacuum, means no air. So initially the tap is closed. This tap is closed. So the gas is only in this chamber. So the in the initial conditions, the volume of the gas is 200 centimeter cube and the pressure is p when you open this tap the gas will occupy both these uh, 
containers. So the volume of the gas will become 300 centimeter cube. The question is what will be the pressure in terms of P? So because we are talking about the pressure of the gas and uh, the temperature is constant, so we can apply the formula P1, V1 equals to P2. P1, let me call it P, and the V1 is 200. P2 is question, and the V2 is 300 centimeter cube. So if I make the P2 alone, it will be 200 P divided by 300. So it's 2 P by 3. 2 P by 3. 2 P by 3. 2 P by 3. So B is the right choice. Sir. Question number 12, B is the choice. Two major components of a coal-fired power stations are a turbine and a generator. What are the output forms of energy from the turbine and from the generator? Turbine's output energy is kinetic energy, and the generator's output energy is electrical energy. So D is the right choice. Question number 13, D is the right choice. Question 14. What is efficiency? You know, the efficiency, it has two formulas. One is the useful output power divided by total input power. The other formula is useful output energy divided by total input energy. So where is the correct formula? C is the right formula, sir. C is the right formula given here. 14, C is the choice. Useful energy output divided by total energy input. Question number 15 is on your screen. A fixed mass of gas is enclosed in a cylinder by a movable piston. So this piston can move. So the volume can be changed. The piston is moved so that the volume occupied by the gas increases. The temperature remains constant. What happens to the pressure of the gas and why does this happen? You know, if the piston is movable and you heated it, so what will happen? The volume, uh, oh, he said, the piston moves so that the volume of the gas increases, the temperature remains constant. Sorry, the temperature remains constant. What happened to the pressure of the gas and why this happened? So if this piston will move to the uh, to the right and that that is because you know uh, the gas has pressure its pressure might be more than the atmospheric pressure so this piston will move to the right until the gas pressure and the outside pressure they become equal to each other so when this will happen the piston will move to the right and it means the pressure of the gas inside will decrease and the reason is there will be less number of molecules colliding with the walls of the piston. So the frequency of the collision of the air molecules with the walls of the piston and the cylinder will decrease. The collision frequency of the air molecules with the walls of the cylinder and the piston has decreased. The pressure will decrease. The reason is the molecules collide with piston less frequently. Yes, sir, this is the right choice. Question number 15, B is the right choice. The rest of the things have uh, they're wrong. The pressure will decrease, that's right. The molecules more move more slowly. No, the molecules do not move, move more slowly because he said the temperature is constant. If the temperature is constant, their kinetic energy do not change, so their speed has not changed. The frequency has dropped, and the frequency of collision with the walls has dropped. That's the reason. So B is the choice. Okay, here we go. Four wet towels are hung out to dry as shown. Which towel dries more quickly? So here we have sunny, windy, cloudy, no windy, cloudy, windy, sunny, no windy. So you know the clothes will dry faster when it is sunny and it's windy. So A is the choice. It's a common sense question. So which conditions make the rate of evaporation faster? That's A choice. Windy and a sunny day. A is the choice. A is the choice.
how is heat conducted in a metal in a metal the heat is transferred through the vibration of the molecules and by the movement of the free electrons through the matter so by vibration of the atoms and movement of electrons through the matter so c is the choice question number 17 c is the right choice The diagram shows four thermometers. Which thermometer has the greatest sensitivity and which thermometer has the greatest range? Let me increase the size so you can see it clearly. Okay. So which one which of them is has the highest greatest sensitivity and which has the greatest range? You know, the greatest range is here in R. 0 to 250, so its range is 250. Its range is only 25, its range is only 10, its range is only 100. So the greatest range is R. 250 is its range. And the thermometer which has the least range will be most sensitive. This one has only 10 range, so it is most, has the greatest sensitivity. So the greatest sensitivity is, uh, the greatest sensitivity the greatest sensitivity was uh, with the q and the and the greatest range is r q r so c is the choice question number 18 c is the choice okay Ice at minus 10 degrees centigrade is heated until it is water at 10 degrees centigrade. So he's talking about heating the ice. Heating ice means that ice was at minus 10 degrees centigrade. You heated it. It will, it will reach the temperature of uh, 0 degrees centigrade. Then the ice will melt and it will convert into water. And that water will be at 0 degrees centigrade. And that the temperature of that water will rise. To 10 degrees centigrade. So that is the story of the question. Which graph shows how the temperature changes with the time? So it's a temperature time graph. It's a heating curve. Let me reduce the size so you can understand it. So the ice started at minus 10. Temperature raises, rises, sorry. And then the ice converts into water. And during that process, the temperature should not change. The curve should become flat. And once, once the, all the water is converted, then again, the temperature should start rising. So B is the correct graph. B is the right option for question number 21. Question number, sorry, sorry, not 21. Question number 19. B is the right choice for question number 19. A substance has a melting point of minus 17 degrees centigrade and a boiling point of 117 degrees centigrade. In which state does the substance exist as minus 10 degrees centigrade and at 110 degrees centigrade? So its melting point is minus 17 degrees centigrade at minus 10 degrees centigrade. Minus 10 degrees centigrade is a higher temperature than minus 17 degrees centigrade. So the thing will be in the liquid form. So at minus 10, the thing should be in the liquid form. At 110 degrees centigrade, you know, its boiling point is 117. And he's asking you at 110 degrees centigrade. 110, 110 degrees centigrade is lower than 117, it's the uh, boiling point. So at 110 degrees centigrade, the thing will be still in liquid form. Liquid, liquid. So at minus 10, it should be liquid. At 110, it should be liquid. So C is the choice. Question number 20, C is the right choice. A wave has a frequency of 2 hertz. How many waves are produced in one minute? Uh, frequency of 2 hertz means that in one second, 2 waves are produced. In one second, 2 waves are produced. And this question is 1 minute, how many waves are produced? In one minute, we have 60 seconds. So in one, in one second, two waves are produced. 
So in 60 seconds, how many waves will be produced? 2 multiply 60. 120 is the answer. 2 multiply 60. So A is the choice, sir. Question number 21, A is the right choice. Okay. The diagram shows a ray of light directed at a plane mirror. The incident ray is making 40 degree angle with the surface of the glass. It's not the angle of incidence, remember. What are the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection? To find the angle of incidence, you have to draw a normal here. A normal is a line which will make a 90 degree angle with the surface of the glass at the point of incidence. So if I draw a normal here, so this angle, angle of incidence is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. This angle is 40. So this angle will be 50. So angle of incidence will be 50. So if the angle of incidence is 50, the angle of reflection will be also 50. 50, 50 is the answer. So the angle of incidence should be 50 and the angle of refraction should also be 50. So, you know, uh, so this is the whole question on your screen. If this is 40, this is the normal, this angle will be 50. So angle of incidence is 50. Angle of reflection will be also 50. 50, 50. So D is the choice. Question number 22, D is the right choice. Question number 23. Light travels through a glass block as shown. Which angle is the critical angle for light in the glass block? Critical angle is the angle, uh, incidence angle in the dense medium for which the angle of refraction in the rare medium is of 90 degree. So here, this is a dense medium. Here is the angle of incidence in the dense medium. An angle of refraction in the rare medium is of 90 degree. So this B, that angle of incidence in the dense medium is called critical angle. So B is the choice. B, question number 23, B is the right choice. A man is short-sighted. Which ray diagram shows what happens to his eye? when he looks at a distant objects. You know, the, when you are short-sighted, short the main problem with the lens of your eye is that it bends the light too much. So the focal length of the eye lens becomes shorter. So what happens, the light is focused before the retina. The light should be focused on the retina. So C is the right choice. 24C is the right choice. Which device uses ultraviolet radiation? Ultraviolet radiation, UV light is used to kill germs. UV light is used in sun belts. Hmm. So D is the right choice. Question number five, 25, D is the choice. Ooh. Question number 26 is on your screen. He says, two long straight wires hang vertically close to each other. The wires carry current in the opposite direction. So here are the two wires. They are parallel to each other. This dot means that the current is coming out of the pitch. And this cross means that the current is going into the pitch. Okay? So, Diagram shows the magnetic field pattern around the wire. You know, we can find the direction of the magnetic field pattern about, around a current carrying wire with the help of the right hand. So take your right hand, hold the conductor in your right hand in such a way that the thumb is in the direction of the current, conventional current. And the curls of your finger will tell you the direction of the magnetic field. So you see the... The dot, dot means that the current is coming out of the page. So it means the wire which is represented with a dot, the magnetic field around it should be anti-clockwise. The magnetic lines around the wire which is represented with the dot should be anti-clockwise. And I will apply the right hand on the wire which is represented with the cross which means which means that the current is going into the page 
so it will be like this the current is into the page so now the curves of my finger they show the direction of the magnetic field they are <clears throat> when i see them they are clockwise you can use your right hand to do this so b looks the right option sir b looks the right option b is the right option question number 26 b is the right option we can uh, let's let me explain to you how the other things are rejected here this around the dot here represented clockwise that's wrong around the clock here represented anti clock is that's right around around the cross he again represented with the anti clockwise that's wrong so these two are wrong here around the dot he represented with the clockwise that's wrong so uh Okay, question number twenty-seven is on your screen. A positively charged insulated metal sphere is brought close to, but does not touch a similar uncharged metal sphere. So, this is positively charged. It has positive charge on this, and this has no charge, sun charge. So, when you bring this positively charged near this uh, uncharged metal sphere, so what will happen on this left end? uh negative charges uh, negative charges will appear and on this end the here the negative charge will appear and here the positive charges will appear so the for question number 27 which diagram shows the charge distribution on the sphere so d looks the best option that on the left end of this uncharged sphere there should be negatives because the negatives will be attracted by the positive positively charged sphere so here we will have some negatives and on this side we will have some positive charge because the electrons are transferred to the left hand so d looks the right choice so d is the right choice Question twenty eight is on your screen. The current voltage graphs are for different electrical components. Uh, which graph is for a resistor at constant temperature, and which is for a filament lamp? The constant, uh, the resistor at constant temperature, it will be obeying the Ohm's law, so its graph will be a straight line graph. Uh, so, figure two is the is the real is the correct. representation of a resistor at constant temperature and for the filament lamp the iv graph um, here because on the y axis we have current and on the x axis we have voltage the slope here is uh, reciprocal reciprocal of the you know reciprocal of the of the of the resistor the slope of this graph is reciprocal of the resistor so Uh, we know that the filament lamp's uh, resistance gradually increases the slope should gradually decrease so figure 3 is the right choice for the filament lamp so for uh, the constant temperature resistor at constant temperature figure 2 and for filament lamp figure 3 so c is the right option for question number 28 c is the right option Question number twenty nine is on your screen. The diagram shows an ammeter connected to a circuit. What is the current in the ammeter? You know, we know the resistance. We know the EMF of the of the battery, and there is only one resistor. So the current coming from the battery will be EMF divided by the resistance. It is two kilo. Two kilo ohm. Two kilo ohm means. that the resistance is 2000 so let me take out that okay so here on your screen you can see question number 29 so question number 29 is v is equals to ir i is equals to v by r 
equals to 10 divided by 2000 and the answer is 0 0.005 ampere which is uh, 5 expo minus 3 ampere which is 5 milliamp which is 5 milliamp 5 milliamp is the answer so a is the choice a is the right choice sir Question 30 is on your screen. In the circuit shown, the potential difference across 4 ohm resistor is 8 volt. What is the potential difference across 2 ohm resistors? So the EMF of the battery is 12 volt. So from the battery, 12 volts are coming. So the 4 ohm resistor has taken 8 volt. So how much voltage is left for the 2 ohm? 12 minus 8. 12 minus 8, 4 ohm. Uh, sorry, 4 volt. So for 2 ohm resistor, the voltage will be 2, 4 volt. So A is the choice. Question number 30, A is the choice. Then question number 31, a lamp is rated at one, 12 volt, 600 milliwatt. What is the current in the lamp? The power is given, the voltage is given, and the current is questioned. You know the power is equal to IV. So I will be equal to power divided by voltage. But the power is in milliwatt, milli, milliwatts. Let me show you my work. Question number 31 is on your screen. P is equal to IV. I is equal to P by V. And 600 X4 minus 3 divided by 12. So it will be 50 X4 minus 3. So 50 milliamp. 50 milliamp is the answer. 50 milliamp. So B is the choice. Question number 31, B is the right choice. Question 32, a water heater uses 6 kilowatt of electric power when connected to a 240 volt circuit. Which fuse is more suitable for use in this circuit? First of all, we need to know how much current is taken by this uh, uh, water heater. So power is equal to IV, I is equal to P divided by V. So kilowatts, 6000 divided by 240. I have done this on a paper, let me show you. So the power is equal to IV, I is equal to P divided by V equals to 6000 divided by 240. So 25 amp. So the current taken by the water heater is 25 amp. So the heat, the fuse, the rating of the fuse must be more than 25 amp. So the best option will be 30 amp. The rating of the fuse, the best rating of the fuse is 30 amp. So C is the choice. The diagram shows a beam of electrons entering a magnetic field. The direction of the field is into the page. In which direction are the electrons deflected? Here we will apply the left hand rule. You know, according to the left hand rule, you take your left hand, you stretch your fingers of the left hand in such a way that they are perpendicular to each other. This is called thumb, middle finger, uh, index finger, and the middle finger. Thumb. Index finger and the middle finger. We call it FMC. 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 So magnetic field is into the page. Okay. Beam of electrons is going in this way. My thumb is pointing upward. But you know this left hand rule is not about the electrons because the electrons are negative. The thumb, the left hand rule is for the positive charges. So whatever this left, left hand is telling you, the direction of the force, this thumb is force F, and it's an upward direction, but because these are electrons, so we will take the direction opposite to this. So the electron will be deflected towards the bottom of the pitch. So C is the choice. Question number 33, C is the choice. Left hand rule is about the 
flow of positive charges. It is not about the flow of negative charge. Electrons are negative. So whatever the direction, direction was predicted by the left hand rule, we have taken the opposite to that. Towards the bottom of the page. So C is the choice. Question number 33, C is the choice. A rectangle coil is placed between the poles of a magnet. A current passes through the coil as shown. What happens to the coil? So you can apply here the left hand rule on this, for example, on this side, the left side of the coil, the current is coming towards me. And I apply the left hand rule, magnetic field is going from north to south. So current is coming towards me, my thumb is pointing upward. So in this side, the force will be in the upward direction. On this side, obviously the force will be in the downward direction. So this coil will start rotating in a clockwise manner. So it rotates in a clockwise manner. It rotates in a clockwise manner. So D is the option. D is the right option. Question 34, D is the option. A bar magnet is pushed into one end of a long coil connected to a sensitive meter. Which of the following affects the magnitude of the deflection of the ammeter? Magnitude of deflection of the ammeter, if you want a larger deflection. Uh, so the larger deflection depends upon the number of the turns of the coil per unit length. It depends upon the magnetic strength of the bar magnet. It also depends upon how fast you are moving the bar magnet, okay? Which of the following affects the magnitude of the deflection of the meter? The direction in which the coil is moved, no. The speed with which the magnet enters the coil, yes, that is, the, that is a factor. Which end of the coil is used, no. Which pole of the magnet enters first, no. So, B is the right option. B is the right option, okay? So, B is the right option, 35. B is the right option. Which that says which graph represents the voltage output of simple AC generator? The AC generator produces alternating current. Its voltage goes into positive and into negative. It's always a sinusoidal wave. So B is the right option, sir. It's a simple question. B is the right option. This is the AC generator. B. Question number 37 is on your screen. The electrical circuit shown consists of a cell connected to a resistor. What are the directions of the electron flow and of the conventional current in the resistor? The, the conventional current starts from the positive, goes towards the negative. So conventional, flow, uh, so, so the conventional current will be towards the right, from left to right in the resistor and the electron flow is from the negative terminal of the battery towards the positive terminal of the battery so the electron flow will be from right to left so electron flow will be from the right to left and the electron and the conventional current from the current will be from left to right so d looks the right option question number 37 d is the right option Question 38 is on your screen. The nucleus of a helium atom is represented by HE24. What does a neutral atom of helium contains? It has two protons, it has two neutrons, and it has two electrons in the orbits. So electrons are two, protons are two, and neutrons are two. So A is the right choice. Question number 38, A is the right choice. Question number 39 is on your screen. What is the safest way to dispose of a large quantity of highly radioactive waste? We always dig tunnels, like a kilometer, two kilometer, 10 kilometer deep tunnel, and we put the radioactive waste in those tunnels. 
burning it on a fire no burning it in a dry rock deep underground yes pouring it down the drain no pumping it into a river no so b is the right option sir 39 b is the best option the count rate from a radioactive material falls from 400 counts per second to 50 counts per second in 12 minutes what is its half life let me show you my work so it started with 400 if one half life has passed the count rate will drop to 200 another half life will pass and it will fall to 100 another half life will pass and it will fall to 50 so the total half lives have passed how many half lives one two three but he says total 12 minutes have passed so it means three half life is equals to 12 so one half life will be 12 divided by three four minutes so when one half life is how much four minutes so for question number 40 c is the option four minutes i hope you have understood it that's it students Today we have done uh, May June 2012 one two paper. It was an MC, it was an MCQ paper. The course we are studying is Physics 5054. And uh, my name is Farhan Mazar. I hope that this video is helpful to you and uh, your answering skills and your understanding of physics. I hope by these videos is improving. Take care. Have a good day. And God bless you all. Thank you very much.